Hi, welcome to Chat Communications Happenings and Trends. So I wanted to try something a little different today. It's a bit more unstructured, if you will. And it's just kind of just outlaying a little bit of frustration that I'm having or that I'm seeing in the country as far as the so-called so Democratic Resistance Party. So before I started recording, I just kind of made a little bit of notes about what the Democratic Party had promised that they would protect or fight for or advocate for and um, how they failed in that. Um, first off, and this kind of spins out of like, who is actually representing us? So recently in New York, they voted out all but one fake Democrat. And so what was going on there is that they had people masquerading as Democrats, but they were in fact caucusing with the Republican Party and supporting those type of policies. And understandably so, people were a bit frustrated by this. And so they had some elections and they were able to remove some of these people from power, which is fantastic. I'm very glad that people are seeing kind of a problem that we're experienced with our two party system here in the US, which is that we don't really have a true party that represents the people. What we have is a corporatist party and it's just one massive group of people that tend to just agree with everything they, that their corporate overlords tell them to do. So this is obviously a problem and this is not actually a unique phenomenon to New York City. It's happening all over the country. And so I just wanted to just outline some things that we were told this party would be standing for or fighting against and they have failed. One thing that they promised to do is protect DACA. And so if you don't remember who DACA, who, what DACA is, it is a program that was designed for um, kids that were brought into the United States by their parents by no fault of their own and they were awarded special protection so that they could stay and live and work within the United States. Now they still had to meet with immigration officials and do all of the paperwork and it's a process to say the least, but these are law abiding citizens and they were supposed to be protected by the Democrats and of course uh, the Democrats failed DACA recipients here. Another thing that, that Democrats at least promised at some point was to actually expand the Affordable Care Act. So the ACA is basically a privatized insurance scheme. And that's the best way that I can really describe it because what it does, everybody has to buy into the system. That's insurance anyways. Um, so if you have a problem with that, take that up to the insurance companies because that has nothing to do with the government. That is how insurance works. You buy into a system, you buy a policy, and then you are supposed to, I guess, be able to be covered medically if something were to go awry or if you have a pre-existing health condition. Now, the ACA was good for, for what it's worth. Uh, it did, did help expand coverage to a lot more people that didn't actually have it before. And it also assured that people with pre-existing conditions could get coverage without being discriminated against or without, I guess, having their condition not covered but then themselves covered. So for what it was worth, it was an okay thing. However, what has happened with it is that it's had no price controls whatsoever and so all these insurance companies, which there's not that many, so the insurance companies basically are getting more and more money from us by and, and, and actually not really offering much in return. And there's a reasonable frustration there, but we were promised that they would expand the ACA and thus become a single payer Medicare for all system or, or something along those lines. That did not happen either. So another thing that we were told that the Democratic Party would quote unquote resist would be the deconstruction of banking regulations. Now, we have just, well, there's an argument to be made that we are not over the uh, economic crisis that happened in 2008, the crash. Um, there's a good argument there. Wages are still stagnant and people just really aren't really feeling a lot of the recovery that, that should be here at this point. However, they gutted the banking regulations again. And when that happened the last time, we experienced one of the most devastating crashes in my lifetime. And so it's just going to set the stage for more uh, trouble. But we were promised that they would uh, help protect us as consumers and as 
citizens of the United States. Um, we don't have a resistance party to any of these endless wars. And speaking of which, um, Mike Pompeo, which is, he's current CIA director, he is going for the uh, Secretary of State position, and he is likely to be confirmed for that position. Now, he is a complete and total war hawk. He loves these wars. He doesn't want, uh, he doesn't have an escape plan. He doesn't want an escape plan for any, uh, or a wind down plan or anything for these wars. It's he just loves them. He loves the brutality of it. I don't know why, but we have nothing, no party that helps represent us that don't want to be in these wars. Uh, for as long as I can remember, we have been at war. And it's tasking. It's exhausting. It's People's lives are ruined and dead and all of these things that are horrible. And we have nothing to represent us to get us out. And so you want to talk about a quote-unquote resistance party here. Um, Senator Joe Manchin uh, put out a tweet on the 23rd of April um, saying that after meeting with Mike Pompeo, discussing his foreign policy perspectives and considering his distinguished time as CIA director and his exemplary career in public service, I will vote to confirm Mike Pompeo to be our next Secretary of State. Okay, thank you, Joe Manchin. That's fabulous because you are a total war hawk. You are not a Democrat. Oh, by the way, West Virginia, he's, he says he's a Democrat, but I'm not really sure what party any of these parties, any of these people belong to. It's so frustrating um, because they are total war hawks, complete and total um, war hawks. And as far as I understand, he really only might be okay to be confirmed because he's going to probably have all of the Republicans behind him, maybe minus Rand Paul, libertarian Republican. Um, I don't think Joe, uh, John McCain is back from his brain cancer incident. So he only needed, what, one additional Democrat for the confirmation? And it seems like Joe Manchin is on board, as well as potentially Heidi Hetkamp. I can't say her name very well. Um, so that was something that we uh, don't have. We've got all these confirmations from Warhawks, not to mention the war in Syria. Now, if you start talking about that, Oh my goodness, like, you are apparently un-American if you think that people, sh that sh there should have been an investigation before we bombed Syria. Is, I mean, is that where we are now? Are we that brutal as a, as a society and as a human race that we can't even just wait for evidence? Just wait. We don't need to escalate things. We don't have the evidence to support this. But what Democrat is speaking out against this? What resistance party? I don't see it. I mean, yeah, if you want to like start tar start talking about these like faux marches, woo, women's march, woo, march on science. Okay, what the fuck did that do? How did that help? I'm talking policy. We need to have policy discussions, not about like grabbing as many people as you can to go to downtown and just stand around with this fucking sign. Like who has our backs? Nobody. So what are we voting for? What's the point when you only have one party and they only represent a certain group of people, which is the oligarchs? It's frustrating. It's so frustrating. Okay, another thing, net neutrality. What happened with that? So I'm hearing that Democrats are supposedly supporting net neutrality, but again, that, that I don't really hear much of it. And so these are just things that I just wrote down right before recording. And, and if I took like 10 minutes, I could probably think of thousands of more, more things that the supposed resistance party is supposed to be resisting or supporting and actually failing wonderfully at it. They fail great, right? Because I think that's the point. They're designed to fail. So we need to really come to a realization here that we don't have representative democracy. And I don't know if we ever did, but we need to make some changes. And part of that is, is to actually do an introspection look at what your party stands for and what you stand for. And that's the only way that I could really sleep at night. Um, and I hope that uh, people watching will do the same. Um, really do a critical analysis. Think. You know, don't take my word for it. Go and read these articles and see exactly what your member of Congress or your senator supports or doesn't support. Because 
those are important things to know. It's not good enough to just do a hashtag fucking resist. It's not. You have to actually resist policy or support policy because this country is failing. This country is failing the people and there's no soft way I can put that, but it is. And that's my discussion for today. I am uh, very disappointed, but hopefully we can make some really good changes. I see a lot of movement. Um, so I guess that's the bright side of the situation here is that there are actual progressives running for at least local seats and, and really do try to get more involved. I mean, it's, it's not enough to show up at a march. Um, I have my personal feelings about those things because I, I think that they are virtually ineffective. Um, I think if you're going to protest, you've got to protest. Um, you've got to be inconvenient. Um, but that's just my personal take on it. Now, if you don't have the time, I get it. No, it's hard. We're working multiple jobs. I get it. Um, just do what you can. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button and please subscribe to our channel and make sure you hit that bell so that you get notifications when we upload new videos. And please try to support me on Patreon. I can't do any of this without your help. So thanks again.